Hello students, hope you did very well in today's exam. It must have been a tiring day and all of you need a good rest. But I'm going to discuss few dermatology questions in short and the options which were the recall questions and the recall options from the students. So some of you can just comment in the chat box if you find that any question was not relevant or if the options were different. So let us begin with the dermatology recall. So, uh, student said that one image came and in that image there were multiple small papillary lesions. Some of them were very large as well. And in the question it was written that the patient presented with such presentation as shown in the image and patient was suffering from HIV. So, all of you know that this is immunocompromised condition and immunocompromised conditions predisposes for various infections which can be bacterial, viral and there is one viral condition which can present with such type of papillary lesions with central umbilication which is very characteristic of which condition? Molluscum contagiosum and in these immunocompromised cases like HIV patients, they can be disseminated that is large in size, more in number, okay so and can be present over atypical sites so this is a case of molluscum contagiosum where multiple lesions are present and they are larger in size in immunocompromised patients moving on to the next question they showed one image of a child having very large dark lesion present over face with lot of hypertrichosis that is excessive hair growth and this image shows that this is a lesion which is a giant congenital melanocytic nevus. So, giant congenital melanocytic nevus is a benign condition. So, remember that this is a benign condition and it might persist in the same way whole life, okay. But in very few cases, there are chances of malignancy which can develop and obviously this malignancy is present where it is present in the skin itself. So, in very rare cases like 5% of the cases can develop another skin malignancy from this benign lesion and that is malignant melanoma. So, there are chances of malignant melanoma which have been reported in such cases. So, this is a case of a giant congenital melanocytic nevus. Then here, this is a very common condition that is acne and all of you know that when acne becomes very severe like grade 4 nodulocystic acne, then the drug of choice of acne is isotretinoin. And we also know that in acne, there is a role of bacteria that is propionobacterium acne. That's why we also use antibiotics. So, both these are the modalities which are used in the treatment of acne but here they are saying that patient is suffering from acne which is not responding to the normal treatment that is the common treatment which is given for acne like antibiotics or isotretinoin then what you should do next. Okay. So, remember that here they are saying that what you should do next if the patient is not responding to the ideal treatment. Okay. If we talk about the etiology of acne, we know that there is role of bacteria that is propionobacterium acne P acne and that's why we give antibiotics. Okay. Similarly, there is excessive sebum production. So, this is a disorder of acne is a disorder of pilosebaceous unit. So, excessive sebum. So, that's why we give isotretinoin which reduces sebum activity, sebaceous gland activity and remember that these are also hormonal because these are hormonal. So, that's why what happens that during puberty, these lesions start developing or sometimes whenever there is hyperandrogenism, then also these patients might present with acne. There is one condition known as PCOS where also patient have insulin resistance and acne formation. So, all these are the conditions sometimes can precipitate acne. So, if they are not responding to antibiotics, isotretinoin, then you should look for some hormonal imbalance in the patient. So, this is one option which is pointing towards another root cause of acne and you can treat that cause and again these acne will respond. So, common treatments are these but if their patients are not responding then we have to look for some uncommon causes or some rare causes like hormonal imbalance like PCOS or any condition having hyperandrogenism. Then patient presented with, this question must have been discussed in uh, gynae as well. So, female presenting with cervical erosion and vaginal discharge. Okay. Now, remember that the patient have vaginal discharge. It is very important to do per speculum examination so that you can differentiate that whether this is only vaginal discharge or there is cervical involvement as well. Because vaginal discharge, we use green kit, which is kit number two 
which is provided by NACO, that is National AIDS Control Organization. But remember that cervical erosion, that is cervical discharge is there or cervical involvement is there, then we give kit 1, which is grey in colour. So, remember that when patient have urethral discharge, cervical discharge or anorectal discharge, which is generally due to gonorrhea or non-gonococcal that is chlamydia, then we give grey kit. But when the patient only have vaginal discharge and no cervical involvement, then we give green kit because it have treatment for all the three that is trichomoniasis, candidiasis and bacterial vaginosis. So, because here there is cervical erosion, that's why we have to choose grey kit and this vaginal discharge is actually what it is cervical discharge which is coming out through vagina so per speculum examination is pointing towards cervical erosion so that's why the answer here will be grey coming to the next question this is a very common question and already this question have been asked i have discussed in my videos as well so all of you remember that patients can develop contact dermatitis contact dermatitis and contact dermatitis is that is the patient developing dermatitis or inflammation due to contact to some chemical that chemicals are in common products like it can be in the hair dye and in the hair dye the chemical which causes contact dermatitis and this dermatitis is known as allergic contact dermatitis the chemical is PPD in short we write it PPD that is paraphenylene diamine this can cause allergic contact dermatitis so patient applied dye and started developing lot of inflammation that is dermatitis itis means inflammation so there will be redness there will be swelling there will be warm sensation and there will be lot of edema so that is what you can see that there is lot of redness itching and swelling which is developing and this can be due to this chemical which is present in hair dye but while if they ask you the most common it is nickel the most common is nickel which is present in artificial jewelry or ornaments similarly cobalt chloride which is present in tattoo dye and monobenzyl ether of hydroquinone is one chemical which causes contact leucoderma and it is present in rubber so these are various chemicals which are sometimes asked in dermatology. So this is all for today. I got these uh, recall questions. Though some students were saying that there was one question on syphilis as well. So you can just type in the chat box if there was some question on syphilis. So all of you know that these syphilitic patients, they present with single painless genital ulcers with hard that is button like induration very firm induration and bilateral non-tender lymphadenopathy so if there is painless genital ulcer with non-tender lymphadenopathy it can be syphilis okay then some students were saying that there was question on keloid so remember that keloid are present generally over chest or at the surgical sites and they are treated with the help of injectable that is intralesional steroids and there is also role of 5-FU in the treatment okay uh, some students were saying that there was question on veruca vulgaris and some were saying that that was not veruca vulgaris that was a verucous carcinoma so uh, they were confused in between so remember that if it was veruca vulgaris then you can mark the answer that is uh, the treatment for veruca vulgaris which is the anogenital warts on penis that is anogenital warts so treatment is imiqui mode if that is not there then podophyllotoxin so these were the other questions and in the coming time we will definitely come up with a separate session explaining all these questions in detail so thank you very much signing off here dr mani soni